Kim and Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today is day four of our still life. We're going to be focusing on how to create this realistic peeled lemon. I'm really excited to share this with you today because this was actually the object you guys showed me the most concern about. You were like, I just, I think I can get that glass in. I'm feeling kind of okay about those round grapes because it's a circle. There was, there was some optimism about the flower. Interestingly enough, a lot of optimism about the knife. <laughs> and the concern kind of came around the lemon. So I'm going to show you how easy that is to break down. But something I want to say right at the beginning, that while I'm saying this is like a two hoot, even though it's long, and while I'm saying this is easy, remember that your experience as an artist is not a one size fits all. Oh, right? Yeah. And like, it's just like me in cars. Right? I'm really good at painting a lot of things, but I get completely just befuddled sometimes when I'm doing automobiles mm -hmm. and machinery. Not buildings, not cities. I'm great until I have to put those cars in. It's a thing. We don't have, you know, really the same experience. So when I'm saying these scales, when I'm saying I think this is about a two hoot, I'm thinking this is, this is easy. This is a subjective observation and if your experiences may be slightly different than the groups that's okay that is totally okay that's very normal as an artist though i am going to explain this every step i'm going to show you how to create this object i'm going to show you how to do reflective light i'm going to show you how to get the peel texture i'm going to show you how to get all these yellows because there's so many yellows in this lemon you have no idea it's like the grapes and i'm going to show you how to succeed at it oh good Oh, and on the mic is my husband, John. Oh, hi, guys. I'm not here alone today. I don't know where I was going. I just went off on a little tangent there. Oh, no, no. And there, there are lots of people here. They're lining up. They've got questions coming in here. They're excited to put this piece in today. Whoa, so. this be, this, I, is everyone's painting looking like amazing? I feel I'm, like everyone's painting is looking amazing on these still life paintings. I'm so excited about that. I saw yeah. a lot of still lifes coming together, and I'm really impressed. So... It's, it's, it's pretty exciting, and I have a special surprise when we come to the end on Saturday when we get in the rest of the still life and we finish up with the metal. Mm -hmm. oh, besides yeah. the fun of how easy it's going to be to paint metal with no metallic paint. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I got a little surprise at the end of that, and it's not that great. I'm like one of those parents, like, I've got a great surprise, and it's like, I hit a message in a cupcake for you, and you're like, I thought it was a new swing set. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, be calibrated. Let's look at our materials. Oh, okay. Uh, button three. Button three. Okay. So over here I have out, I started putting out my palette. I like to keep some of the colors that I used previously and around my palette, out on my palette. The reason being, let me find my burnt sienna, is that um, I may have to paint around my lemon. I may have to touch things up. So even though I might be predominantly working in my, did you see that? <laughs> in my yellows today, Right. I still wanted to um, have everything out, so I have a lot of room to work in. Mm. So today I have titanium white and I have zinc white. I have cadmium yellow medium, which if you're trying to know, because you know what the pigment is, this is pigment, you know, 35, right? And then I have the nickel yellow or Naples yellow. This can be called either thing, nickel yellow or Naples yellow. I have ultramarine blue, dogsine purple, thalo green, thalo blue, blue, burnt sienna. Nope, that's burnt sienna, burnt umber. And I'm going to put out some glazing medium because we're still lifing. Oh, cool. That was weird and awkward. Well, just, you knew which ones they were. They just, you know. My brain. Woo, this is so it's fun like, to do. I'm sorry. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm jamming on pouring out my stuff. You know, I still have my Naples over here. I still have my full color palette. You know, keep those aside because as you're working, you may find that you need things. Um, but that's basically what I think I'm going to be working from today. On the website, on the, the page for this section of the painting, because this whole still life is a collection on our website that you can access for free anytime. It has the traceable, the black and whites, the reference photos, the blow-ups, all that stuff that you need. Also has a little infographic about some more, uh, like you guys asked, how can I mix Navel's yellow or why would I even have this color? And we kind of answered that there, and I did a little mixing infographic yeah. to help out. Yes. Because I'm helpful. You are. Maybe. Painting. My brush just dropped. My tongue oh. just dropped. You dropped it? Like we'll way over it. there, I'll too. Like it. it went away. I will it stunt jumped hands away it. and said, You can't use it anymore. You know what? Hi. Is it the number four? Yeah. <laughs> Look, it went away. The number. No, no. 
No, no, it's right there. Is this live? You know it is when a painting brush jumps right. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but brushes jump right out of my hand. They go, no, I don't want to do it. All right, I got my chalk, and it's sharpened. You know, we also have to remember you have a whole pile of them behind you. You can just use those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we just went through all that. Because I don't want to touch the pretty display. It makes me super happy. <laughs> it's like such a good hoard. So we put in, when we first put in our still life, we had sketched out the basic round shape of our lemon. But, you know, we know we're going to put our peel in front of everything. So one thing I'm going to take on my chalk is I want to start sketching out my peel. And if I look at my reference, I can see that my peel sort of veers off from its little main body over this direction. And I like to use chalk because, of course, it erases so easily with just a little wet uh, wet brush. Really easy to work with, and it vanishes into the paint. And this is somewhat thick, isn't it? Yeah. So I want to make sure that I give a thickness here, you know, to this peel so that that looks really nice and robust. And I know this line comes forward because it's thick here. Now, over here, believe it or not, we don't really see the twist, but it has a twist in it. So it actually twists and kind of comes forward. The reason I'm doing this is we've got to come in and put a little uh, white in. Actually, I might sketch this in in yellow paint just because then you can see all of it easier. So I'm going to get right into that Naples yellow and a little white. And I'm going to put this in because I think that you guys will see all the places that it's going to be just a little bit easier and the Naples yellow will vanish nicely into anything that I'm working on and since my painting is dry right I'm gonna I'm gonna freak y'all out for a second oh no what see what I did there I do really upsetting isn't it that is concerning but because my painting is dry overnight I don't have to worry about things right now. Now, <laughs> I, w I, w I would say you haven't varnished this. I haven't varnished this. What this is about is that I have my paint. It's been dry overnight. It's well, you and know, it's well fixed to the canvas. And so I just don't have that worry. Also, you're using a pro paint. I am using a pro paint. Some student paints are less forgiving of that. But it is important to remember in all things acrylic, there is a forgiveness factor. That you have now here at the bottom of the of the plate the peel curls back and kind of curls around so let's put mm -hmm. that line down there because we know that's coming and it crosses if you think the front of our lemon where it's sliced is more right here we're going to be running the slices see how that kind of works now are you just using a round brush i'm just using a number four round brush to sketch in okay so Again, like we've been talking about, I'm a little more like Titan than Michelangelo, though it's funny I'm even using those two terms. But the idea being that I tend to be a little looser. Loosey-goosey. Yeah. I'm in the loosey-goosey crew. It's not right. It's just a way of doing it. Once I have my loosey-goosey in and I kind of know where I'm going to put things, then I can easily object-orient. And when I say object-orient, I mean that I am referencing objects that are near each other to make relationships and scale. So I'm like, if no. I know I need this little triangle here, so I gotta make sure that that's there. And I'm just making sure that these things are sized correctly to each other. Now, you, uh, you sharpen your chalk just with a pencil sharpener. Yes, this was actually a community suggested idea and it's one of my favorites we've ever gotten. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you guys. They're very happy to be here today. They're, I'm happy to be here today. There's lots See, of still life questions. Um, there's a traceable too, so don't freak out, y'all. Yeah, we were just chatting about that in, in chat. So. <laughs> don't freak out. There's a traceable. And there's a link right here in the description below where you can find that on our website. Yeah. See, so this comes around. It has some rinding that shows. Rinding. You know, rinding. There's some rinding, and I can easily put my purple back. So I'm just sort of figuring out, you know, what I'm doing. If this sets, it's see, once it sets, it's a little harder to erase. Yeah. So that's the thing that you've got to be prepared to go back and handle, which I am. Because I what? I put my background colors in here. See? <laughs> Other way of erasing. 
So that I don't have actually, to be stressed. I'm going to zoom in on that because that was actually really cool. You just like. <laughs> just took it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to have panic about this. It's not the thing I got to panic about. There right. are things I got to panic about and things I don't got to panic about. And I don't got to panic about erasing on my canvas. I do need to block in the twirl shape, right, and what that is like. You know, so that's what I'm sort of like sketching out here. And I don't want to, because you guys have the traceable if you want that. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking to do that. But there's nothing wrong with it. All right. This Ryan comes in. This is a fun thing. Isn't it visually confusing? Well, it's interesting. I kind of, you know, I mean, I'm glad we have the reference there. Uh, or it would just be overwhelming, right? Yeah. It's like um, uh, Cinnamon sent me the larger close ups here of these, uh, of the section we were working. And uh, I, she was right. That's, I'm glad we have them here because it really does help having that. Uh, that up close at. version of this kind of being here right they love how your grapes turned out i loved how my grapes turned out so i'm just making sure i know where things are i'm just loosely putting them in so i know i've got my lemon here and i'm looking see how this is narrow here so i know to thicken this out yep so i'm just using these things and some raw paint to sort of sketch in a lot of times people just get really nervous about sketching in with paint it really, really, really gives them like major anxiety. But I know I'm going to be doing cad yellow on my rind. So I know I can pretty much sketch in with this. And I've got to lighten up over these grapes because the yellow is so transparent. Yeah. Get a little of this white. So I know that I've got this sort of weird little rindy thing <laughs> a foot here. And then I've got this little bit's going to be peeking out right here. Elizabeth in chat was 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 laughing. She says, "I'm getting the feeling the grapes are so much easier than the lemon." <laughs> <laughs> Just in the laying in, if you choose to lay it in with me, like we are doing right now, right? So I'm graying out my nickel yellow with my purple and brown. See how I've just kind of knocked that back? Oh yeah. And I get some of my white, and I'm just gonna. Just put this in a slightly different value here that's not dissimilar from the value I'll be finishing it out with mm -hmm. so I can see it. Oh, yeah. See, that's all I'm doing is I'm just saying, oh, I've got this here. And then I can go more into my blue. Kind of see where things are and not do it with a value that's so different from where I'll be going that it's going to interfere with the painting. You know, because we know this is this is sort of choppy, right? Mm -hmm. The rind is super choppy. And I'm arcing back here because I'm seeing relationship-wise that this is pretty thick. So I need to leave enough thickness for this to work. Still just working circles. I know it seems like I'm doing something different than grapes, but I'm just working very complicated curves. So all that's happening is these complicated, weird little curves that I'm trying to talk about. You know. You know, if you could just I'm gonna a come here, here with this purple hold on, here. Hold on just a second here. I'm seeing that we may have a little bit of a... We're gonna take. We're gonna, come over to look at the camera here. We're gonna take. I'm a gonna take a sip of my coffee. We're gonna take a sip of your coffee here while I check something. While I get my my twirl and everyone goes, twirl doesn't look good. Don't like twirl. Well, we just had a, we had a little moment there where the 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 stream was having a moment. Do we need to reset our stream? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check it here because I can do that. I'm gonna go over here and look at it. and I'm gonna just. Uh, Hi. Feel good about your painting. Barely. Okay, so we're we're broadcasting back out, which <laughs> should reconnect. And it says good. There it we says go. good? It says good. I think we good, fixed good. it. Okay, so good, we're good. back. So I'm just still trying to... I've got my weird grayed out color that I did earlier. Okay. And I'm here in my way. And I'm just making sure that those these objects that I need to be able to see, like this is... That's pretty thin right there, so I know to take this line pretty thin. You know, as it's coming here, it gets thinner and thinner as it's coming around for being the rind and then I'm going to make sure that this is 
a little bit wondery because you know this this rind when it was peeled rinds don't peel like perfectly smooth right mm -hmm. just putting that in so I can see it it's enough of a value but it's not so different from the value that I will be eventually working I love painting open pomegranates um, misting my thing as it's cooking. <laughs> um, I love painting open pomegranates, peeled tangerines, any of that. So I'm just taking my burnt umber and my docks purple into my Naples yellow and then adding some white and if I need to I'm adding a little bit of my blue and this is just creating this cool weird rind color like you do. It's going to get a lot lighter, right? I just need to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to see where things are. And that's, it's sort of like sometimes when we're, um, I see a couple processes for painting realism out there. It's fairly popular, right? Is the just paint a like right? Yeah. But other times people just kind of and then just keep zeroing in on what was important to them. So these things are both acceptable processes. Now there was a. I'm going oh, to draw this line we're right having here. More buffering issues here. Uh oh. So I think we give you just. This is a not a good one to have a buffering. Well, issue. that's why I can fix it if I push the buttons. So, okay. So before you sketch it in, you just stand right there, and literally it'll be two seconds. Back. Uh, are we here? I think so. Yep. Okay. Back to the color? Nope. It says no. Still is having issue. Do we need to record this? Well, we are recording this. Okay. You know what I'm saying. We are. So yeah, if we, if we, if, if we can't get this reestablished and coming back out, watch, I'll, I'll make sure I'll try yeah. one more time. Because we have magic buttons. We, All it right. It says good. It says good. Okay. So I've got this kind of like thing in the center right here. We know we've got, and then we've got a little bit of these sections that come in at slightly different lengths that are coming down here. There's some more sections over here at the corner. I just need to know where, where is this stuff? I'm like, where are you? Mm -hmm. So when I come back in to paint you and block you in and think about where you are, then I'm not going to have as hard of a time. Now, I'm going to get my number four cat's tongue. You can get a number four bright. You can get a number four round, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm going to start breaking in some values. So this yellow value is a little bit darker, right, than everything around it. What did I, of course, print out so I could see things better? Your, your, your value study there? I did. See how dark that is? Yeah. So if you're going, where do I got to have a shadow? Where does it got to be dark? Where does it got to be light? Let's say we're going to put in all the shadows right now. So I'm going to take my purple now, and my ultramarine together. And real quick to answer some questions. Yeah. yeah there, and the, and some. In the description below, real quick, the, there's, there's a list of all the brushes that we're using here. Yes. And if you go to theartsherpa.com forward slash brushes, you can find a list of all the retailers that carry all of our brushes there. Exactly. And I love it. And I'm always going to tell you exactly what I'm using. This is definitely not a trick yeah. our community show. No, no. We just, you know, we but, just want to let you, what, that you know that we're at. Yeah. But just know the magic is in you, not the brush. And you, the brush, your best brush to use is the one you pick up yep. and use. That's your very best painting brush. All right. So I've got this color where I've taken the burnt, a little of the purple, a little of the ultramarine, right? There we go. I'm going to get a little of my yellow. I'm going to come over into my cad now. Let's darken up this cad. See how we're graying it out? It's still yellow, but it's grayed out. And then it's going to be about getting a dark enough value here on the bottom of this little rind. No. And it kind of comes up a little bit this way. So I'm going to do that. And then I've got another interesting little shadow. It's much more yellow, but it is right under here. Did you sand this canvas? No, I did not. This is not a specialty canvas. This is an economy canvas. So um, 
if you were trying to get like a really fine result, you would do something like a Frederick's portrait or an ampersand mm -hmm. canvas where you would gesso, gesso and sand and sand and gesso and sand. So I'm just using the dark values here and painting these in where I know I've got these dark shadows, right? Yeah. Adding a little more blue to it. I'm just blocking in. And come back with lots and lots of layers like we always do and say many, many more things like we always do, but right now we're just getting this little sucker in. And and just to let you know, Cinnamon, as uh -huh. well as our community, I'm, I, I think that our, our stream will be okay today. We, you, we There's a lot of storms all over the country, so we may have a couple of technical issues, technical issues here and there, but for the most part, our infrastructure is really solid here in our local area. Things have been going pretty well with our stream technology, and, and YouTube's given us a lot more to, tools recently to improve our, our broadcast. So... You know, we're, uh, I think we're going to be in good shape. Okay. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Well, I, I know that it can be, it can be nervous. Like you want to make sure that you get all the information out and <laughs> they want to make sure that they're going to see it. And, yeah. uh, you know, as an engineer on the backside, I want to let you guys know that I ha I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep the stream up here today. And, and it's looking pretty good for us to be able to keep that going. So I'm pulling into my cad yellow. My cad yellow is going to be all my outer rind and my nickel is going to be all my interior. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be doing mixes of the two for the shadows where they reflect back on each other. So I've mixed some of my cad yellow and some of my white. And I'm going to just make sure that there's this base. We do this a lot, don't we? This sort of underpainting blocking in. Well, I have a lot. Event. This is, it, I tell you, I've learned so much watching this blocking in process because it's changed my approach to like uh, visual design, really. Yeah. Um, it's, you know. But it's not the only way. It's just a, a way. Like sometimes artists will come by, they'll be like so upset because we're not doing it their way. And it's like, look, there's, there's no like magic way. There's a lot of really great ways of doing it. And maybe there's a new way we don't even know about yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be surprised, but it could happen. Right? And so the thing is to be regi you know, regimented enough to be effective and open-minded enough to see the possibilities. That's what you've got to do. All right, so see how I'm taking this yellow up over the top? Oh, yeah. And I'm using this. I mean, I'm just always using these to go, is this in the same value range? So can you uh, move that over? That was a little hidden there. Oh, perfect. There you go. So see, I'm just trying to see. And oh, I'll, I'll even go. come here, and I'll be like, where is this? See, this is exactly right here. Okay, hold on. Let me get up there. See how, like, when I paint on the thing, it just on. vanishes? <laughs> Cam it RoboCam is slow. Oh, and, okay. And there you go. You said where it zooms in. All right, so yes. See how it's just, like, not even there? Yeah. That's one of the ways that you can check your mixture. And that's what you do is you reach up there. And can you yeah. put the, the black and white one right there in that same spot? Yeah. So uh, I'm like, where is that value at? Are these grays the same? Oh, 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 Am right. I too late? Am I, you know, if ah. I was obviously there, it'd be way too dark, right? Yeah. So that's what you're just, you're just trying to go, okay, because sometimes the lemon is so bright and so saturated that it's super confusing, right? Yeah. So I'm going to do a weird kind of crazy thing. I'm going to take a little of my um, ultramarine blue and load my brush and come over to my nickel. And I'm going to gray this color, green this color, cool it with the ultramarine. I don't want it to be obviously green. It should just have a haze of it. And I'm going to lay quite a lot of white. It's almost like three parts white to one part of this color mixture. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just right now work in just the center here. So I have a base of color to be lightening up from. Let me get in there a little bit more for you. All right, because I'm just, what am I doing right now? I'm just covering canvas. Covering my canvas. Come back here. I can take this around here too. Now I can see everything. Now, what are you painting with there? Just my number four cat's time. Okay, is that one? You see, you've been using that most of this painting. It, it's a nice, it's a nice size brush for this size canvas and small and small work. 
Now, I've got some stuff happening here. I have around my um, lemon, I've got some canvas that's unresolved, and I really want to come here a little bit more and finish out the bottom. So I'm going to let all of this rest for a second, rinse out my brush, mm -hmm. and I'm going to grab a nice bright. This is a number eight bright, right, with a synthetic filament. I'm going to get my brush wet, drag off the extra water, and then mix my background colors again, which I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and my phthalo green and a little phthalo blue, and let's get that burnt umber in there and just start making sure that down here there's still this deep value of green and remember we used purple yesterday yep. for shadows so like right under the plate let's get in with the purple we're just continuing what we did you know, looking at our reference, we don't really see the fabric in any kind of real detail till this little corner over here. So it's not important for us yet. And one thing that I can do is I can take some of my background, which is a little of my green and my burnt sienna. And I might get some glaze because this will help me blend into where it's already here. See? Oh, yeah. This just lets me make sure that this is resolved enough to I'm gonna very softly feather this in. So if you have an area where you're like, oh my gosh, I have this big white chunk of canvas, that's no good, you're okay. Don't be like, I'm, you're messed up. You're not messed up. Everything is all right. I'm just blending this out because the last day I'm going to come in and get this in, this in, and some vines. Right? That's what you're doing. Get that stuff in and some vines. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of dry now. I'm going to take a sip, which I probably need microwaved in my coffee. Oh, I, I can come do that. Get you some microwaviness. Yes. Any questions I can answer while you're. Oh, yeah, so, uh,. The if you could talk about the the blocking in and and you know they they really like that you know you're you're using how you're doing the blocking in yeah. if you could touch on that here real quick yes I can I can go into that a little little deeper um, and this this is not something that your brain clicks over immediately this is like I think this is why every art instructor you know mine dumped out trash as we've talked about before but you know throws out some apples or throws out some bolts or throws out some bones is they're trying to help you train your brain to see objects in relationship to each other and how they translate onto a canvas because you're doing kind of a crazy thing this is a three-dimensional object that we're flattening out and we're trying to make feel three-dimensional on a flat surface and so when I'm like trying to figure out how to block things out and I'll get my my um, this here again and I've got this here so a couple of things you'll notice is that when something is in color, sometimes it's lightness. When I talk about value, I'm talking about how light or dark something is. Sometimes that is, that's a little confusing, isn't it? When you see, this is not much deeper than this. And you're like, but wait. So that's how hue, that's color, affects us versus value, which is light and dark. If I say, well, you want me to use the bigger one? I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> sometimes I, you know what I really, I love that. So, <laughs> right? So when you're trying to see that, that's what you're trying to see. And then you're trying to see the shape. So I'm not really drawing this curled lemon right here. I'm just drawing this triangle. I'm not taking on the whole thing. I take yeah. this on, right? And then I take on how narrow this is compared to this. And I take on how far in front of this object this curl goes, right? And I take on this shape. See this shape? This is, when you hear artists talk about negative space, this is what they're talking about, is this area. So the object that we're focused on is the lemon, that's our positive space. And the object that we're not focused on is the negative space. The reason that this artist, and this is so tricky and fun, curled this lemon is look what happened. If this was just a round ball, while you guys would be super excited because that would be a lot easier to paint. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it's not as interesting to us visually. It doesn't tell us as much about the world, does it? But this little triangle here and this little weird rectangle here make this lemon so much more interesting. The fact that it's cut and we see this kind of Fibonacci spiral mm -hmm. going in the center of this lemon creates a lot of excitement for us. So as artists, if we can just resist the urge to leave the lemon whole, which believe you me, when you're setting out your still life, you'll want to leave the lemon whole. You'll think to yourself, if I peel this, it's going to be a whole experience for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You're going to want to leave it whole. But if you can peel it, if you can place it, then I can sit there and take what is a stagnant, boring subject, a bunch of fruit on a plate, and make it kind of exciting. All right. So that, was that what everybody meant? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I dropped my, I dropped my rag. I'll get it. It's okay. I've got one behind here for reasons I don't know. Back up. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> I'm telling you what, now I've painted my reference. Stop it. Okay. I've got another one over here. So as the ink runs, I'll be okay. So I've got to brighten my rind. This is actually, for me, going to be the easy, easy part of the lemon to paint, which is this bright rind. And it's going to be a lot in my cad yellow. However, pure cad yellow is just too much. Even though this lemon feels like it's pure cad yellow, and it's close, it's not quite, is it? No. So how a great way of graying the yellow is to get a smidge. This is my technical term. See how the tip of this brush just has a, a dusting of purple? And it doesn't take much. Did you see it contaminate my yellow? <laughs> it did. It just, that's why I'm like, smidge. Smidge, guys, or your very nice expensive cadmium's all ruined. And you can see I'm working it through. And the magic of you drinking coffee. Hopefully Is it good? I, it's. I'm drinking coffee. You're drinking, let me try again. <sighs> it, don't worry, it'll get back up there. It'll, it'll recover in a when second. When I said an hour and 22 minutes, I didn't know it was going to be because of buffering. Yeah, well, okay. It's, it's not buffering now. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got our yellow. Yep. Right. And no, I'm going to come here. Oh, let me go back down to where you were. I thought you were going to show that. Okay. We got our yellow. And you can see that it's incorporated. This purple color is incorporated into my yellow. It's not painterly. Okay. You can add a little white to the mixture, but you're not going to want to add a lot. And let's start putting in our bright, bright lemon. Oh, start. it is bright. Just pew, pew. This against the purple, very visually exciting, my friends. Very visually exciting. I'm going to make sure this outer edge, clean. Using the edge of my brush just to make sure this is clean. Now, I'm going to get my glazing medium. I can still put a little brown into this. See here where I put mm -hmm. the brown in to make sure that I don't lose my shadow. So the dark value underneath and the toned glaze over it. There we go. I got some got some shadowing happening. And I know that I've got kind of a crazy little, I'm going to get on the tip of my brush here, getting some more of my brown to kind of show this like interesting cut edge. Cut edge. Cut edge. Oh, so nice. I'm going to bring this around. Bringing it around. Then I'm going to make sure that this is thick enough. And again, when we get down here, adding a little of this brown into my yellow. Make sure that that is also dark enough. And I probably will have to come back with a stronger version of this to really resolve it. Get to pick up some more of my yellow. I'm just painting this in now. So now we have kind of a yellow has to be layered because it's so transparent. Right? This yellow is so transparent that to be vibrant on this canvas we're going to have to definitely layer. All right, getting my brush loaded again, getting kind of up here. I'm going to come up and see if I can't make sure that this is starting to become 
the bright aspect that it's meant to be. Getting back on my, you may have to switch. I can stay on this because this brush has a fine tip, but you may have to switch to a fine brush. Bring this bright yellow to the outer edge. It's going to pop when we put the white whites in. But it needs you until then. Right? Mm -hmm. It's going to need you until then. Now I can take a little of this here, even though it's not, even though it's not peeled because the shadow is there. I'm just going to do that really quick. So I've got this here. Let's start really, really working it. All right, I'm going to get a little more of my white onto my brush. I've got a, I, and I'm going to actually maybe switch to my zincs now because what I don't want to do is deaden the yellow. I want to keep the color that I have fairly vibrant and like the grapes, be able to step it uh, in a more controlled way. See how that is very great and that is very vibrant. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to step it in a more controlled way. And in this case, I'm going to be doing more of a stippling stroke. If you're using a bright, switch to a number two to do the stroke. And this is going to be about pulling in these yellows in my zinc. In my stipple, I just grab pure CAD and a little zinc, and I'm just stippling in. my lemon rind. Okay? Mm -hmm. See the stipple? It's going to be important later. Lemon, lemon, lemon. Easy peasy. I almost wish this lemon had a water drop on it or something because that would really help us out a lot. Up here at the top, it's going to become, <laughs> you know, a bit lighter. So I'm going to get more of my zinc. as I'm coming up and I'm still stippling. And I'm stippling yeah. down into the rind. That little stippling kind of makes your eyes fill it out. Well, and it gives you some shadow and some highlight, right? Yeah, the, the, I I'm think, gonna I think. I'm going to get a little more of my that's what it was, mixed one it? and I'm going to just keep stippling. If, uh, yeah, they really want to see that little brush stroke there is what it is. So stipple, 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 stipple. Here, I'll go right here. Hold on. Camera's running up. So whenever I say stippling, you can do it with the bright, you can do it with the round, you can do it with anything, but this is what you're basically talking about. And a lot of times I will try to, I'll get some white to show you, weave into a stipple that I have with another stipple. Oh, you're layering. Yeah. That's so tricky. So tricky. Getting a little of this. I'm going to pull a little of my nickel into my CAD right now and get a little of my zinc in there and I'm just going to keep going. There we go. Just coming around here. I've just got to layer this up. It just takes these layers, man. And I'll have to come in with some shadowing layers, some gray layers down here. So one thing I'm going to recommend is you take a little of the stippling down into this, even though we've got to come back with a lot of shadow. Yeah. Come back over to this shadow, hit it with just a little stippling. Just so when we stipple back a shadow, we're not like, what? Where'd that come from? Out of the blue, nowhere. Right? Because we don't want an out of the blue, nowhere moment. Getting a little of my my blue and it's going to green it. Getting a little of my brown. I come get some of my yellow. Keep stippling in that shadow. I need a shadow. In the shadow. shadow. Oh, it's the shadow color. It's not the shadow grapes. It's not the shadow grapes. It's just, you know. Shadow lemon. It's, I think it's just an aspect of the lemon in the shadows. Well, so, what it is is that as it dips down here, it's it just the, the, the it's lemon, curved out of the light a little bit. The lemon is complex. Like the lemon Superman. is complex, man. Lemons be complex creatures. Yeah. So we get our purple because we know always that purple does what? It's a complement, so it will gray-yellow. No idea that you were going to say that. Really? I feel like I've 
said a lot to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, I... <laughs> like, I don't I, mind if they don't know, but I feel like, you know, I've said it to you a lot. Well, you have. But I mean, like, I, I just, I was, I was like, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with purple now. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, I'm working here, 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 and here to gray. Right? That, now, the, now it, it's, it's real interesting how the, how using the purple to gray it ties it to the grapes. Yes. That I that I do like. I'm gonna come here. It's quite dark here. Right, coming up here. I feel like I'm looking at my. Yeah. Let's put a little of this. I'm gonna get some glaze. There's a little. Oh yeah. And I suppose that's because the light source is casting here. So I'm going to just glaze a little of that shadow. Oh, now you're going back down there. And I'm just still pulling this down. Now I'm going to get a little of my cad yellow, adding it back into my brush. And I'm going to just keep stippling this in until I am not annoyed. Hmm. <laughs> until, How do you know you're done? And, until so you're you not annoyed anymore. You stipple the shadow into submission. So you stipple it into submission. It actually, you ha you are actually just sort of stippling it into submission. Yeah, the layers are are kind of a magical tool there. <laughs> they really are. I've had others say you're cheating. Oh, they said they. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> Astromeria. 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 Yeah. Astromeria. We're still working on it, but you know we're there. I'm gonna get more. Uh, Cad yellow. Just stippling this in. See these dashes, how they're just blending in? Mm -hmm. Blending, 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 blending. Let's pull this up now as I'm coming up. A little bit of the shadows on there. We've now taught people two words. Quinacridone and <laughs> Astromeria. <laughs> so I'm going to mix my yellow into all this I have over here. It incorporates it. And I'm going to add some of my titanium white now. So this is much different than when I zinc. Which is going to let me come right here into this outer aspect oh, and create kind yeah. of like this little brighter spot. And that's, and that's when, you, when you talk about the titanium helping the overpower... Yeah, but when you use the zinc correctly, it used to be that we used lead white as artists. That was our jam, man. It was our jam, the lead white. And it's a good... But they took our jam away because apparently it was super deadly. It's, it's a super good white paint, super bad everything else. Super good. Yeah, just, boy, don't lick a painting. Don't lick an old well, painting, for uh, goodness sakes. Well, don't be, yeah, just don't be near them or around. Yeah, you can be near them. It doesn't jump off the canvas and well, get on you. Don't put it in the water supply. It's just <laughs> art. The museum people are like, oh, no, I have a lead painting. In no. It's not irradiating you, no. Right? Yeah, it's not irradiating. <laughs> it was a good way of looking. I'm going to get right into my cad yellow, and I'm going to put some of this around. Not everywhere. Just some of this insanely cool cad yellow. Maybe along this little edge here. Lemon tree, very pretty. The lemon flower is sweet. All right, let me see it at a distance. Oh. From a distance. We're getting there. I'm looking, 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 looking. How's that? Uh, getting there, getting there, getting there, getting there. Faster. Getting there, getting there, getting there. There's your hat. Yay! There's the studio. Here's my studio. Look, the lemon is like my hat. <laughs> All right, still stippling as we do. And I'm going to do a very light stipple through the shadow. And what this is doing, this like pointillism, it's a type of blending because the eye blends it. Yeah. It's a type of blending that the eye does. All right, still going around. Enjoying it. Got to do this thing up here so back into our main color right back into our main color that we mixed and I'm back um, sometimes it can be hard for people to remember their mixes it's a real challenging thing for some people and it is okay to write down 
if you do the thing on color mixing and making a graph, we talk a lot about how to keep a record of recipes. And that can be super helpful. All right, now I'm gonna take a little of this bright yellow. I'm gonna come to the outside of my lemon with this bright yellow. I'm gonna come under this a little bit and feather in. This is gonna pop against my nickel later. And we're bringing it in as if the pigment of the rind is bleeding in, like you do. And again here, just another coat around this guy right here. Now let's start working the rind a little bit. Rind is just crazy, right? Yeah. So I've got a little of my, my little zinc yellow here and I'm going to take just a smidge, do that what I did before, which is just a, gosh, the barely any purple. And I'm going to get into my zinc white and start lightening my rind. Just come in with this. It's got to be a lot lighter than this, but we're going to just start the process. Just starting the process of lightening this just a little bit. Coming along here, along the inside. See, it's just, it's a process. Just a little bit of a process. The lemon just pops. As Is it starting to everyone, pop? Everyone's thinking so. It's starting to, right? It's still a little yellow. We still got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to wipe off my brush a little bit. The Moonshadow Girl was like, yay, lemon! And without having rinsed, I'm going to just get some cad white. And I'm going to come back here and kind of knock this back a little bit. So we can still see it, but it's... And it still has a little yellow in the pigment. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to get, interestingly enough, my ultramarine. And I'm going to gray that ultramarine with a little of my burnt umber. Mm. And I'm going to get my zinc white. And I'm going to come here underneath and I'm going to add this blue shadow right here. Believe it or not, there is one. It's weird, but it's there. It's and there's weird, another, there. there's a couple places, so I'm gonna get just a little more blue into this mix, and a lot more white. And along this edge, I'm gonna come with this sort of blued edge. Just along it a little bit. It's gonna be interesting when we pop it. I'm gonna take all of this, and I'm gonna get it right into my white. I'm going to come along the edge here, and I'm going to just very softly start working this. Mm. Right? And a lot of what's underneath is showing through. I'm going to come here with the same, what, I think, what I put on my nose? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just coming along here. I know, it takes that, a while to pull it up. That was almost a YouTube meme. <laughs> Turn around, there's a giant. Turn around. Sorry. <laughs> just apologize to everybody in the room. Okay. So I'm just pulling this color around my rind just a little bit so that when I come back to work my rind, this is already in there, right? We don't want to be surprised by it. If you need to pick up a little more. This is why it's fun to paint fruit. You're like, how much color can be in one fruit? So many colors. I'm being restrained. Y'all don't even know. So restrained. I'm 
just coming right over this. So you can see I can still see my spiral under here, but I'm starting to work back what I have. Oh, yeah. Just painting around this edge. This is good because what will happen is when I come into the white white, it's going to help it pop. Now let's create this weird lemony glow underneath here. I'm going to get a little of my cad yellow and a little of my zinc yellow. Kind of create a halfway step between the two of them. I like that. And I'm going to get into my zinc. And that was actually nickel yellow. I don't know why I said zinc yellow. I'm going to come under here and start painting this yellow glow that is under the rind. The zinc is letting the shadow shine through. I sort of put in and that yellow shine through. It's definitely happening around here. It's going to let that purple a little bit we have shine through, but now it's kind of yellow with those undertones. Honestly, it could have an undertone right here, right there, and it doesn't. So I'm going to get a little purple. That smidge like we do when we don't want to be crazy people. You know, is a lot of this going to be under a leaf later? Yep. Still, we don't want to not shadow stuff. We should shadow. Mm -hmm. right. Just adding a little of that there. I'm going to come, I've got a little bit of this color, so I'm going to kind of come right here. Underneath. And I might even come grab a little of my burnt, which is skidding terribly. Right underneath here. Creating this little... value contrast. We might even get a little, I'm going to get a little glaze because it's not blending off my brush nicely. And this is just a hair, isn't it? But it's helping these objects stand out from each other. Look at that. Yeah. So it's the glaze and I'm just on the edge, 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 edge here, dusting, pulling this in. There we go. We're getting there. Getting there. And I want to get a little more zinc. My yellow, just tinted it. Just blending this edge here. Blending that edge there. Let's pop this a little more. Shall we? Yes. Shall we? Okay. So I'm going to get into my titanium white. And I'm going to have it tint. Tint with just a little of my cad yellow. But it's going to be nearly white. I'm going to just very lightly. I might leave the edge of the edge of the rind a little blue and the edge near the rind also be a little bit off color and I'm dry brushing. And how's that popping? Let me see. Ah, there we go. Starting to get a pop, pop, pop. But needs to be just, just a hair of yellow in it. Right, we just want that hair of yellow in it. And just dry brushing it. Preserving some of those layers and colors. On this outside edge here, mm -hmm. the highlight color that you have here. Just a little bit in. And it's come along the front here. There we go. All 
All right, we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Get a little of your just cad yellow on there. Let me look at all that. All right. <laughs> this is coming together really fast. Is it? Yeah. I was worried it was coming together a little slow. No, no. It's, it's just coming together. So here we are. I'm going to sip my coffee. Oh. We're making a lemon. Lemon. Lemon it up. Yeah. So this is nice. Lemony. You, you could take this this little lemon and just paint a lemon as a standalone. If you wanted I to feel just, like you could. If you wanted to just take this and just, if you were interested in being standalone lemon. You could just have a standalone lemon. I'm going to take a little of my burnt sand and my burnt umber. If you're having a lemon I'm going to gray them with a smidge of my ultramarine. I'm going to get a little of my zinc yellow in this craziness. And a little of my glaze. And I'm going to do my best to work out this center crazy. So I have a little shape here. It kind of digs in. Comes up above my Fibonacci spiral. <laughs> and comes down. He's got a little buddy over here. Like they do. A little foot shape fellow that I'm also sketching in. Now their friend right here he's got this crazy sort of little inset and is a little bit squished but rounded at the bottom. Not trying to paint all of them at once. Just trying to paint what I'm seeing because this is actually a little complicated and you want to make sure now, now this one is a little bit like this, mm -hmm. and then it's got a little friend sort of coming in like that. Yeah. This lemon is particularly mellow about being cut up. <laughs> it's like, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. So this is all I'm doing is I'm just painting the one next to it. If they're getting smaller, I'm making mine smaller. See what we're doing? Oh, yeah. And believe it or not, there's a little peak here. So, I'm going to take that color set. And just for the minute, paint everything in with that. That blocking in of those colors. Blocking it in. That's the, the dark value, the way dark value, inside my little lemon here. Which is going to be a lot of zinky goodness. Hmm. Zinky, zinky, zinc whitey goodness. You have any questions today? Oh my gosh! I think you, you've been. Well, doing I'm painting all these in. There's been there there have been lots of questions. I'm sorry, about I just asked that sometimes out of the blue. <laughs> I just know I'm at a place where I could answer one as I'm painting these in. Sure. So uh, the, uh, the 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 stippling that you were doing earlier. Yes. Right now, that could be done with a filbert or a round as well. Oh yeah, any brush. Okay, and it could be done with a braid. It's much more about if you're if you're trying to get that shape with a bright, then you just turn your bright. See, every side of the brush can be painted. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to paint on my bright, I just turn it on the corner. Gotcha. Right. So just remember your brush rotates every side. Every side has. Oh, I like my lemon. It's turning out really good. The segments really made it pop. I'm super happy about that. And that was one of the questions earlier was you know is is that, could this be done as a standalone lesson? Mm -hmm. You know, as you use a standalone piece, and uh, yeah, yeah, you could go home, put a lamp on a lemon, cut it up similar to this, watch me, and then paint your lemon. Mm -hmm. It's totally dope. Now, there's you know, and now we do we don't have a traceable of just the lemon. We don't. But no. we have we have a traceable. We have a traceable of the whole piece, and the lemon is in that. But you could zoom the lemon. You could zoom in on the lemon. You could just, zoom in on the lemon. Yeah. You, your guys are allowed to edit the traceables. Just, I'm cool with that. Just, it's cool. You, if, you wanted, if you wanted to do just the lemon, just the lemons. I don't know. Maybe we'll vote on another still life, and they could be lemon intensive. There may be a lemon. There's a lot of lemon love happening. In, in I like today. a lemon too, guys. I am a big fan of a lemon too, and we haven't even gotten into all the yellows. I mean, if you're like really painting lemons, I, well, I think that you can have a great time with all of it, right? 
Now I'm going to do this weird thing I feel strongly about, and it's a weird deal. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine, and I think I'm going to do my zinc white. And I'm going to come here between this, and I'm going to blue up the space around these segments just a smidge. See this? Just oh yeah. a smidge. Just a smidge. I'm going to blue it up just around the lemon segments. And definitely get some right here. So I'm coming around here. Blue, 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 blue coming right here. This blue, right, and I may even come back and add a little blue dry brush between the rind. Mm -hmm. See this here? I'm just dry brushing this blue between the rind and the white in front of it. When, okay, um, when you want to make something white look whiter, yeah, blue. Oh, yeah. I was wondering why you were putting blue on there. Because when you want to make something white look whiter, blue it. it. It's in blue. Put blue by it, and it's going to make all the white next to it seem a little bluer. That's why they put blue dye and stuff to make your shirts whiter. And oh. Yeah. They're tricky like that. They Just putting are. it right here at this upper edge. And you wouldn't think, because you don't overtly see blue in this lemon, uh -huh. you would never think to yourself, you know what this really needs. Yeah, I would not have thought this. Is a little blue. You know, I was like, I was like, I was wondering why you were putting blue on there. I was like, I don't think I see any blue in there. I know, it's <laughs> the craziest thing. I'm going to take a little of this and this again, and I'm going to blue my shadow here a bit as well with a glaze. So people used to be like, why are you painting yourself so fast? Because I do this stuff. Actually, you're, and, and you're actually being kind of mellow. Earlier, earlier you were painting a little fast because you were worried about the stream. But I think that, you know. Uh, oh, am I chilling out? Yeah, you've been much more chiller. I, okay, I'm sorry if ever well, I get. No, no earlier but on. See how I'm casting this yeah. blue value over these shadows? Yeah. But there's the brown underneath. Really like that. And see how that made that white pop? Yeah. And it's made that curl pop, didn't it? It and it's really cooled did. everything, and that's super nice. Yeah. And I like that. I like that step. I do too. It does. It makes it nice and shadowy. Now I'm gonna get into my wonderful happity. Yeah, you call maples. that a, a living shadow. A living shadow. Living shadow. Because that's it. Really does have that more lifelike quality. I'm I'm not at all trying to throw any shade <laughs> towards tonalist artists either. Right, because tonalists really look at the grayscale and they really look at values and colorists tend to look at what color reflects on other colors and how they impact each other and if there's a light flow back onto something. So still lifes are kind of like our jam. Right. Kind of like our jam. 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 Lemon so, jam. Lemon jam. So I've taken a little of my purple. Yep. Just a smidge. Oh, there's the lemon awesome sauce. And I'm coming here and I'm kind of doing these weird little segments inside, right? Mm -hmm. These guys at first. This is, again, probably a darker color than they will be at the end. But I'm just trying to make that texture like you might like. That lemon texture. Yeah. Those little segmented pockets of yum. Mm -hmm. that Make your lemonade so lemony. And it's really nice how the zinc, not the zinc, the Naples yellow, the nickel yellow, yeah. is so different than the CAD. It is a very challenging color to mix, which is why I buy the tube. If a color is easy to mix, I don't buy the tube. Because, <laughs> right. like, I'm not a money tree. I don't know about yeah. you. <laughs> but last to check, I don't have one of those in the backyard. A very nice magnolia, but not a money tree. So, you know, I'm like, I don't mind buying tubes of paint I need, you know, but if they really mix perfectly, then I, I like, I very rarely get unbleached titanium because I can mix yeah. that really easily. Yeah. Nothing wrong with getting it, by the way, if you do, like literally nothing wrong 
at all with getting it. But my whole thing on that is, and I'm going to get a little of my, my titanium white here to my nickel and make quite a light color now. See how light that is? Mm-hmm. Much lighter than this, isn't it? Yeah. So you can, I don't know if you can see those two against each other. This is what we just did. This is what we're doing now. See? Oh, yeah. Just segments. Mm -hmm. It is the titanium white that's going to pull this all together. I promise you. All right. So I'm going to pull my titanium white out and I'm going to tint it with just a smidge. Gosh, a hair of my nickel. Yeah. And I'm going to start painting in my rind. I've got a pretty dry brush and I'm letting some of the blue show through. Now in the center here, I probably will pay attention to my brush strokes coming outward just so that if they have texture in them like mine tend to because I paint heavy body paint, they play to the directionality of my item. Right? Yeah. And through here, through these. But see how I'm leaving a bunch of that blue that I put down. And all it does is help this be painterly and dimensional and valuable. You're almost done with this. I am literally almost done with this, guys. There's just you a know, couple of things left to do. I'm, I'm going to put some dance like music on shocking it. shocking few things left to do. So while you're putting that in there, you can have a little dance with her because they were so they are so happy that we've had we've you know we've had just we've not not had quite had 300 people here, but we've had a, we've way over 200 people and they've all been very excited. They've been they enjoying to, this. They were they've been really enjoying this and they were like, "Yeah, we got to dance." We do. And Let me knock my lemon back a I'm little bit. I'm gonna let you knock your lemon back here. So I'm taking a little of my zinc and I'm dusting it over my lemon sockets. Yeah. Just a little of my zinc white with a little of my nickel yellow on there. See, I'm just dusting it back. A little bit. It needs to be dry though to do it. Yeah. Let me dry it. All right, you dry it. I'm gonna dry it because I need to dust it back. That's called knocking it back. And sometimes if things are too vibrant, you can push them back with something like mixing white or zinc white. Okay. Well, while she's doing it, I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you guys for all coming and hanging out with us today. You know, I'm gonna get the music, get the music in there for cinnamon. You know, we really really love when you guys come and hang out with us for these uh, these live events. And this has been especially nice here, uh, doing these um, these still life programs here with you guys. So, uh, you know, because I've got to see all those coming up on on uh, on Facebook and on our website. Uh, so don't forget to post those up there. You know, again on our website or on Facebook so that uh, so I can see more of them. Cinnamon's just turning around, giving us a little dance. Hey, and, and if you guys are at home, don't forget to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes if you can't get up and dance with us because it's important to celebrate. And that's what we're mostly here to do is to have a good time and remember that creativity is just this wonderful expression of life we get to have, right? And everybody who is being rehomed right now because of the weather, please we're be safe, please yeah, arrive. Our hearts go out yourself. to you. You know, so so sorry that that's happening to you. We get it. Yeah, literally, literally, it's in our, it's all around us. We our, were so our, blessed. The kids' schools are so yeah crazy right now. But all right, I'm gonna keep getting my zinc. Okay. I'm just knocking this back a smidge. It it won't paint them out. I just want to push it back, just a little bit back, so that they're just very light. Because I want these to be light. See how that's lighting them up? Mm-hmm. Oh, it does. It makes the, the blues almost disappeared now. Yeah, but it's still really, really it's, there. It's, it's, it's very, I mean, but it, you, it you doesn't look like yeah, it's there, but it's, it's like, really, really there. It's there, but it's not there. It's there, it's, but it's not there. It's, it's the not there blue. I'm going to get what's a little bit of what's left of my burnt umber, and I'm going to get a little glaze here. And I'm going to come under this lemon peel with my glaze. 
And just before we go, you're going to tell you, you're going to talk about Southwest Week, right? Explain yes, what's going of on. Okay. course. Okay, good. Is so everyone excited about that? Or very like, excited. Oh about my that. God, they're, Southwest Week. What is she no, doing? No, no, they're, they're just want to know, like, what more about it? What's going on? How's it going? Give us more information. Really excited about it. Want to know. Okay, so, that's kind of nice to know. Because, yeah, like, very, I never know if you guys are going to be like, woohoo, Southwest Week. Or you're going to be like, oh, no. No, no, they're very. It's, Southwest Week. All right, here's the thing we're going to get right into our titanium white. We need our pure white. Yeah. And we're going to a couple of places inside our lemon. Please make some highlights. With just your pure white. Because if you look at it, it's wet and it has that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See how that pops it? Well, I don't know if it's too blown out for it to see. No, it's good. Okay. It's, it's just very, it's, it's very white. You know, this is a very dark painting. And, and then the lemon got and real And the light. lemon then just goes, kapow! I also <laughs> like to, on my peel... But it's at threshold for sure. As you <laughs> zoom out, you can see. On my peel, I like to just add a little white. Pure white. At the end. Not a crazy amount. Because otherwise it'll be just too much. I don't know if they can see any of this. Oh yeah, they totally can. I'm like, I'm seeing it. I've got the big screen over here. Okay. So it's like my it's my monitor the, is the not white. As I mean, when you put that white on there, that just peaks out the monitors. It's like it's like that that yellow that white that you put on there has yeah. just screamed. That's as that's as bright as I can make that pixel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when you compare it to the it's grapes, my zinc and which is which are which are very very dark, I'm very very dark zinc grapes. Over this, just a touch, a couple places, so it's a little blended. Not too much, and that's what I like about the zinc is I can I can gray, I can zinc, I can totally work a space until I'm like, yep. That's my jam. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Hopefully you guys feel pretty good about your lemon and you're much, much less intimidated by things that are lemony and you're not like, man, I can't get that curl. I can't get that thing. And you recognize that there's a value to the shape. Again, I think the still life would have been really dull if the lemon had been whole. Yeah. Um, Southwest Week, which you've seen the first painting I did, which is part of So the whole Southwest Week, our motto for Southwest Week is your vibe attracts your tribe, yep. which I'm really into, and follow your arrow. And so the first one is kind of this bohemian gypsy arrow inspired piece, but of you know, because modern takes on Southwestern art. I grew up with Southwestern art, uh, Southwest Art Magazine. I um, love Remington. I love the great artists of the West. I actually have ancestors that were artists in the West, so kind of maybe speaks to my soul. I'm not really sure. I grew up with horses. I'm really excited about it. That whole week, we're going to be doing pieces with sort of a Southwest flair, color palette, design ideas, topic matter. Yeah. It should be pretty fun. So if, you know, you love that type of art, you love deserts, you love mesas, you love pueblos, gonna you're going to be like, you love full moons, mm -hmm. feathers. We got your jam all week, live, every day. Every day. Every day, and then finally Daenerys again because Daenerys got rerouted. I want to. I want to say love to all the folks out there who are going through the crazy storm, and thank yeah. you to all the folks at YouTube who make our awesome tools so we can keep our streams going. And come back tomorrow so you can finish this. You're going to paint this metal knife, and you're not going to use any metallic paint. Mm -hmm. You will be using some of this yellow, so keep some around. Yeah. <laughs> be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Lemon, lemon, easy peasy, squeezy, whatever. I want to see you at these really soon. Bye bye. <laughs>